Hello everybody, this is Maria Kay, and today we're not going to stretch or squat or dance. Today we're going to cook. And um, this was kind of a necessity, um, so this is how I decided what we're going to cook. Uh, the thing is that um, we have a bit of an emergency. We ran out of onion jam. Onion jam is something I discovered, I want to say, maybe couple of years ago. I had no idea this was a, a thing um, until we started getting the HelloFresh subscription and a lot of their burger recipes include onion jam. And so I was like, this is awesome. I, I just completely fell in love with it. Just totally um, went gaga over it and um, decided to try, hey, um, you know, treat it like a regular jam and can't. So now I can actually uh, figure, you know, I make it, I put it into jars, and I save it for a while, and we literally are on our last jar. Uh, so that is not to be born, so we need some more onion jam. So today I will be using a regular Vidalia onion for this. Uh, this is not my favorite onion to use, although it does work in a pinch. Um, my absolute favorite onion to use is the sweet red Italian onion. Uh, it is normally available in the onion section, but obviously there's been interruptions with uh, various deliveries. And so, um, you know, I just, I'm just making do with the regular uh, Vidalia onion. Uh, the thing to know about um, sweet red Italian onion, if you have a reaction, a strong reaction to onion, if it makes you cry, you are going to need a hazmat suit for that one because it is an absolutely gorgeous onion. I love cooking with it. It's so much fun. It's so beautiful, but it sprays like crazy. I don't have a very strong reaction to onion, and it even gets to me. I start crying. Um, but and if you if you do normally cry uh, when you cut onions, that one is 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 a doozy. So something to keep in mind. But today is just regular onions, just got them at the grocery store. So let's go ahead and get started. So for um, both my onion jam and my uh, French onion soup, I like to have um, sort of long, thin pieces in there. I want it to be nice and kind of gloppy sloppy. Um, so it is, um, it's more like a slaw. You cut it more like a slaw than um, like a jam or a chutney. Um, for chutney, you would usually chunk it. In this particular case, I don't. I thin slice it. So just, you know, make sure you don't chop anything up. Although I should talk. Um, I have, I don't know how many nicks from the knife uh, from doing so much pickling and jamming and all of that. And just cooking at home. You know, make sure you get a good strong knife and sharp knife. The sharper your knife, the less this thing is going to spray. And so between... Let's see, my, what was left in my onion bag, I have so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, kind of a smallish to medium size onions today. Uh, when you have a large onion, the sweet Italian is usually um, pretty big. So with sweet Italian, I can get away probably with five or six, but these are smaller, so. We are gonna just maximize our volume. So once I am down to about two onions, or if it were a big onion, probably down to the last one, chopping them up, I'm gonna start heating up my pan and put it on medium. The pan I'm using is this lovely um, emerald with um, copper, um, you know, uh, copper isolated bottom. I love this pan. I use it a lot specifically for things like onion jam and other jams and chutneys because it is deep. It has a, you know, a nice big holding handle. It has a pickup handle right here and 
um, it uh, allows me plenty of room to start mixing stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting the stuff in. I'm going to start with the drizzle of olive oil. And I'm using the um, extra virgin olive oil, nothing special. Something I picked up at Aldi's. Um, love these glass bottles. I always sell, uh, save them and then use them to make uh, homemade cordials later. So starting to heat up the pan, medium heat, and then start uh, popping the onions in. All right? All right. Now that I have the onions in the pan, I'm gonna stir them a bit. I actually love using wooden utensils. A lot of my cooking utensils and love them. Yeah, you have to hand wash them, otherwise it's gonna dry them out, but that's fine. So now that I have them in there, there's two things I'm gonna do before I'm gonna cut up and throw in the remaining two onions. One is I'm gonna turn the flames down even lower. Right now I have it on two on my stove. And another thing I'm gonna do is I am going to add a couple of pinches of salt because I want them to start juicing. Because basically, onion jam is largely onions cooked in their own juice. I add other stuff. I add lemon juice to that, I add uh, red wine to that, good times. Uh, but we do want the onions to start juicing on their own as well. And we're gonna add a little bit of sugar just uh, as soon as we get the rest of the onions in. So. Right now, they're just going to quietly sit there on low flame, and I can already see they're starting to, uh, to juice, and, you know, I can go ahead and uh, finish cutting up the remaining onions. All right, folks, so the uh, onions are cooking. Uh, I'm slowly sautéing them until they are maybe just the teeniest bit golden and translucent. Now, I've seen many, many recipes that say cook the onions for five minutes until they are translucent and just a little bit golden. That is a lie. I think by now I have cooked hundreds of onions. And never in my life have I ever seen them obligingly turn um, translucent so quickly. Um, I think usually it takes at least uh, 10 minutes on on low um, low heat. And you have to do it on low heat because otherwise you're going to scorch them. You um, have to basically keep stirring them and uh, keep turning them and be patient. So if you want to take note, if you're a stickler for measurements, so we had two pinches of salt in there already. Now I am going to add another, let's see, one teaspoon, two teaspoons of salt, and I'm going to add a tablespoon two tablespoons of sugar. So we have just added two teaspoons of salt and two tablespoons of sugar. It is jam after all. It's going to be a little bit sweet, but just a little bit, not too much. Um, you know, you want it um, kind of on a sweet and tangy side of things. So while I was waiting uh, for my onions to get to the right states, and as you can see, they are quite soft now. They're in that nice, soft, translucent stage. And there's quite a bit of liquid in there. And that is all onion juice, um, you know, that just came from, you know, salting them and sugaring them. So while I was waiting for that, that I went and set out my other ingredients. I went and got a cup of wine, refilled my um, little salt cup, my sugar dish, and got out the um, uh, lemon juice and stepped out to the porch and cut some herbs. So what have we here? We have um, we have some oregano. We have a little bit of rosemary. Uh, we have some fresh thyme. 
and I might actually pop out again and check if I have a little bit of parsley. Uh, these are all amazingly sturdy herbs. They uh, all have uh, weathered the winter. My uh, biggest thyme plant is uh, something like two or three years old by now. I think my oregano is three years old too. Uh, the rosemary is two years old. So unless you live in Antarctica, you can grow these outside. And I've been harvesting them all winter. So I'm going to go ahead and prep them and start adding things up. All right, so here is my little handful of herbs. And I just chopped them up. And now I'm going to drop them in, mix them in. I wish, I wish I, could, I could record the smell of this because it smells really good right now. Turn this down a bit. And this is where we want to do a taste before we add anything else. And my favorite thing for tasting things is a tasting spoon. I use it for everything. Um, it's particularly good for liquid things or anything with a liquid in it where liquid determines the flavor of the whole which here is very much the case so how does it work so it it starts with this skinny little narrow opening up here and then it has a groove so the way it works is that you scoop with this end with the big end and then you just go like this and while it travels down the groove it cools so you don't burn him up so I'm gonna scoop up I can. Just the teeniest. Well, it might not have enough liquid anymore. It might have cooked it out, so I, I may have to do it the old fashioned way. Still, you know, helps to blow on it <laughs> before you actually do it. So let me grab a piece of the onion and see how they're doing. Okay. So, they're still a little bit crunchy. So, we're going to add some more liquid to them. So we'll start with lemon juice. And again, for the sticklers out there, let me grab a measuring cup. Hold on just one second. We are going to add to this a quarter cup of lemon juice. And turn up the flames just a little bit to start reboiling it. And start with, let's see, what's this, half a cup of red wine. And mix, 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 mix. So this is when it starts getting its color. And this is where I prefer to cook with the, um, with the red onion because it starts off pink and it gets to be really, really just beautiful and intense color. So here we go. And what we're going to do is let it cook down. So I am going to turn the heat just a little bit up. So we're now on medium low. And here we are, as you can see, so we are bringing it back to the boil. All right. And it's starting to turn a very pretty color and so once I went uh, I have it through the boil and um, cool down cycle I'm gonna taste the liquid again and see if we need to add anything else All right so we brought this to the boil with the wine in it give it a stir Let's turn this down and see how we're doing on flavor Not bad. Not bad. I think it needs a little bit more salt and a little bit more sugar. So what I'm going to do is add, what's this? This is my quarter teaspoon of salt. 
and put the back. teaspoon of sugar and mix that in turn it back up see how we did and this is where it turns from a science to an art I am pretty certain I have never made this thing the same way twice I'm absolutely certain about this. And that's the fun of it. You know, it's it's kind of, you know, comforting and familiar. And at the same time, it's not, you know, kind of a little bit different every time. So let's see how we did here. Stirring, stirring, stirring. And we'll taste it again. bit of taste. Yes. Yes. That's what we need. Now, something to remember. So it's cooking now. We're going to put it in jars. We're going to heat treat the jars. So it is going to still cook a little bit. Plus, another thing to remember is there's a couple of things I put into the jar. And that's kind of my signature thing. And feel free to borrow this because it's really, really fun and, and tasty. I always put into the jar two things. A laurel leaf and some peppercorns. So usually two peppercorns. Sometimes, uh, for pickles, I add a clove or two of garlic. Not in this case. I want this pure in terms of the onion flavor. So... We are going to go ahead and do that. And so there's going to be another set of flavors being added to this as it sits in the jar and as, as it percolates there. So the flavor, you're never tasting quite what it's going to be in the end, but it's close. So we are ready to start getting the jam into the jars. And so I went and got some of my um, remaining uh, canning tools and supplies. First of all, I don't like gadgets normally. I don't have a lot in my kitchen. I don't have to have the latest. But this collapsible funnel is like my favorite thing ever. It's one of the few kind of gadgety things that I have and I love it for solids collapsible. Um, and second, so it goes into the jar like that and allows me to measure stuff into it and not make a horrible mess all over the place, which I have been known to do. So that's number one. Uh, my other favorite thing, um, I bought this at um, Williams Sonoma, and um, I love this particular ladle because it has these little scoops on the side. I don't know if you could see this, but it makes pouring things with it a lot easier than for a ladle with a straight edge. So I just love this thing. And again, it's nice and heavy, you know, can be used as um, a weapon of self-defense if you want. You can really whack somebody with this one. So keep your trusty ladle close. So that's my other thing. Um, I have here my bay leaf, my peppercorn, and my citric acid. I always add citric acid on top to... Um, basically minimize the possibility of growth of any kind of mold or bacteria. All right, so it's not enough that it's been heated within an inch of its life. I just, I have to do this. This is, I always do this. So let's get started. Uh, and of course, you know, I have my caps. The jars have been prepped. They have been very carefully washed. And I also don't have a, uh, a pressure pot or anything special. I just use this big big old pot. I do need to replace it. It's so big it's starting to peel. And it's filled to about, I want to say, but to, from um, about a third uh, with, with just water. And it works just fine. I was able to pressurize the jars fine. I never had a jar pop. 
in the pantry, so this works really well. So let's go ahead and get her going. Get my bay leaf in, and another one. We'll see if we have a third jar. And some peppercorns. There we go. Got that in. And start pour and keep this in place so it doesn't fall over. Okay, it's still piping hot. There we go. And make sure when you scoop, uh, scoop both some of the, you know, roughage and some liquid at the same time. Let me see how full we are. We are pretty full here. So I'm going to stop and move it to another jar. And that is when I'm going to top it with a little bit of citric acid. The most important thing is not the outer outer cap, but the you know the cap that goes on top of the jar, the cap that's supposed to seal. So we're gonna pop that into the water. So we're gonna finish um, our jars and then we're going to heat treat. So here we go. We have our jars in the water and um, the uh, flames are on high. I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Bring the water to a boil and then leave them there for 20 minutes. Then turn it off, let them cool, never touch them straight out of this. They're gonna be incredibly hot. And, um, you know, they'll be ready to go into the pantry. Um, usually, when you're using this type of cap, uh, you can tell uh, they are nice and sealed when you hear the pop. And it's kind of an eerie little sound. I'm just used to hearing, uh, listening to for it when I when I pickle or jam or whatever. Uh, so, but there is like this little button right there in the middle, um, and that is going to get sucked in as they seal up, as the um, content cools, and it's going to make a little pop, and you know it is um, safe to preserve. Um, I usually preserve these about. I want to say three to four months, and that has been perfectly safe. Um, but um, I, um, you know, I think these are just so, so, so great to have. So now you know how to make onion jam. Uh, it's good on anything. It is good on pork chops. It's good on chicken. Um, we particularly love it um, the way HelloFresh showed us to begin with. We love it on burgers. Oh my God, they're so good on burgers. Uh, but, you know, you can have them straight from the jar. I have a friend at work who got addicted to this stuff. Um, I treated him, I think, for uh, Christmas or something. And he is just, uh, he, he, it's one of those things he could just eat every day. And his wife can't stand onions. So when I give him a jar, I would say, hey, here's your fix. <laughs> but he eats it spoon to mouth, basically. He doesn't even put anything on it. As for the wine, we didn't choose, uh, we didn't use, as you recall, we only use um, uh, half a cup of wine. Well, we can't very well go, let it go to waste. I mean, there's a pandemic on. That would be ridiculous. Cheers.